Hi there guys, welcome to the first of a new series of videos that I'm going to call Poor Man's PVM uh, which is basically just looking at the cheapest ways to kill monsters and what sort of inventory setups you could use as well and today we're going to look at the Glacors so this guide is not for rich people who have more expensive gear and can have access to overloads and that kind of thing. This is more for people who only have a few mil and don't have overloads and turmoil, that kind of thing. So there's plenty of other guides that have the most optimal setups, so go and watch those if you're rich. But if you're poor, then this guide might be for you. So let's get on to the requirements. Okay, so first thing you absolutely have to have done is the Ritual of the Marjorat quest. If you haven't done that, go and do it first and then come back to this guide. And things that I would recommend taking are Fire Spell Runes, the highest level that you can possibly take because Glacers are in fact weak to Fire Spells. You can use Melee if you want, I'll go over that later. A high Prayer Bonus might help you last longer in your trips. The Elite Mage Void set would be good if you have it. A healing familiar, such as a bunyip or a unicorn if you have one. And a ring of wealth to make your trips more profitable. And give you a better chance of getting the steadfast boot drop. Because that's what everyone wants, isn't it? The reason I take a ring of wealth over a seer's ring is because the mage bonus from the seer's ring isn't so important. Because the glacers already have quite a low mage defense. So you can substitute those stats for a better chance of getting better drops. Okay, so what I've got here is the higher level setup, which I reckon most of you might be wanting to use, and it's what I personally use. In the Aura slot, I've got the Reverence Aura, which reduces the rate at which your prayer is drained, and it also increases the amount of prayer that's restored by prayer potions. In the Head slot, I've got the Arim's Hood, an Amulet of Fury, I've got the Ard Ardoin Cloak, I think it's pronounced. Uh, this gives plus six magic attack, and plus six prayer bonus, so it's pretty nice for mage. Got the Arim's top and robe skirt. I've got the staff of light to save on runes, and I've got Zamorak's unholy book. This gives plus eight magic attack, and it also gives eight prayer bonus. But obviously, if you can't afford this, I would recommend using a blessed spirit shield or a mage's book or something like that. For the boots, I'm just using Infinity Boots, and I've got Barrow's Gloves and a Ring of Wealth. For the inventory, I've got an Enhanced Excalibur. I've got a Vecna Skull. If you can't afford this, just use normal Mage Potions. I've got the runes necessary for Fire Wave, because I'm not 95 magic, so I can't use Fire Surge. Uh, I've got Prayer Renewal Potions. I'm just bringing two of them. And I've got a few prayer potions. Depending on your prayer bonus, you might want to bring more or less if you've got a higher prayer bonus. And I've just brought a bit of food to just in case. And I've got a bunyip pouch as well. For the sake of being really cheap, I'm going to show you the absolute cheapest setup I could think of that might work efficiently. This, as you can see here, the total carried wealth on me right now, including my inventory setup, is 350k, which isn't a lot. So a lot of you guys should be able to afford this. But as you can see from the stats, my mage attack bonus is only 68, so it's not going to be as quick as the other more expensive setup. But like I say, the purpose of this is just to be as cheap as possible. So what I've got is again the reverence aura, which is absolutely free, if you remember. The mystic set. But instead of Mystic Gloves, what I've got here is Chaos Gauntlets from the Family Crest quest. This boosts the maximum hit of all Bolt spells by 30, so it makes it almost as good as the uh, Fire Wave spell, which is the next sort of tier up. I've got an Amulet of Glory, Ardoon Cape, because that's free as well, you just have to do the Ardoon Task set. Uh, I've got the Spirit Shield, which is about 40 to 50k. And I've just been turned into a chicken. I've got the Lava Battle Staff to save on fire runes. You could use a fire staff if you wanted. And again, I've got the Ring of Wealth. As for runes, I'm using the Fire Bolt spell with the Chaos Gauntlet. So I've just got Chaos runes and Air runes. As well as a Magic Potion 
I've got a few more prayer potions with this setup. I've still got two prayer renewals and I've just got some food and a, a bunyip pouch again. Now to get to the Glacor Caves you're going to want to head to Xanaris and then first off summon your familiar and recharge your summoning points using the obelisk near the fairy ring. Then use the fairy ring code DKQ to head straight to the Glacor Caves. Once you're inside the cave head southeast to where there's a pillar in the middle of the room. When you're attacking the Glacor you're going to stand on one side of the pillar whilst attacking the Glacor which is on the other side so you, later on in the kill you'll need to be able to hide from the Glacor by moving behind the pillar. When you're ready to attack the Glacor, pot up and use the Mystic Might Prayer if you want 15% extra Mage bonus and use either Protect from Range or Mage. Make sure you're stood as far away as possible when you're attacking because there's no way to know what attack style the Glacor will use first so being far away will give you more time to react if you need to change protection prayers from either Mage to Range or vice versa. The Glacier's attacks only register damage once they actually physically hit you rather than with things like Jad where you need to have the right prayer on quite a while before the attack actually hits you. So that's why it's good to stand a good distance away from the Glacier to give you a bit more time to react as I've just said. The way to identify whether an attack is range or mage is actually quite simple. The range attack looks like a small icicle or a missile and the mage attack looks more like a bright blue orb. So they're quite distinctive really and it'll just take a bit of practice at first just getting used to identifying the spells. Don't worry too much if you do cock up a little bit. The most that the attacks generally hit is around 200 to 300 so it's not like they can one shot you. They'll only kill you if you're not really paying attention. And there's also a reason why I've recommended that you bring some food just in case. One other thing to note is that Glacors have two special attacks. The first one, which is pretty common, it looks a bit like the normal ranged attack, except there's a lot more icicles coming towards you at once. What this does is it lands on the square that you were stood on when the Glacor fired the shot. So all you need to do is move to the side slightly to avoid it. I would strongly recommend avoiding it because it can hit for a very high amount of damage if you're not careful. The second special attack is a free spell which occurs when you're not protecting against magic attacks. You'll basically be encased in a block of ice which you can get out of by spam clicking on the ground near you. When you get the Glacor to half health they'll spawn three little minions called the Glacites which is when you should run behind the pillar of ice to prevent the Glacor from attacking you while you take care of the Glacites during which you should use protect from melee as that's their only main attack. Each Glacite has a unique ability which can be transferred to the Glacor, but which ability the Glacor inherits depends on which Glacite you kill last. So you'll want to kill the two more powerful Glacites first and the least deadly one last so that the Glacor gets the least powerful ability. The Glacite you should probably kill first is the Sapping Glacite which drains your prayer each time it hits you so you should try and lure this one away so that you can get it stuck behind another Glacite so you can reach it from a distance without it attacking you. If however you're using a very cheap and low level gear setup like the Mystic set that I showed you earlier I'd recommend killing this one last instead but I'll explain why in a minute. The unstable Glacite is the one that you should try and pay the most attention to as it can damage you for a high amount of damage if you're not paying attention. Throughout the kill it will have what looks like a HP bar above its head which slowly fills up over time. Once that bar reaches full it will stand still for a second and then damage itself but if you stood next to it it will also damage you so all you need to do is move away from it when that bar is full to avoid being hurt. This is also the one that you should kill last if you have a decent gear setup and mage level. The reason why you shouldn't kill it last if you're using a crap gear setup is because if the Glacor inherits the unstable Glacite's ability of self-destructing, once the Glacor damages itself, if you don't kill it quickly enough, then it'll just regenerate its health back. And with crap gear, you won't be able to put out the damage quick enough to finish it off. The Enduring Glacite is the one you'd never want to kill last because this one reduces its damage taken the closer it is to the Glacor. So what you have to do to kill this one is attack it to lure it away from the Glacor which then allows you to deal more damage to it and kill it more quickly because it's further away from the Glacor. If you do kill this one last by mistake then the Glacor will reduce its damage taken by 60% which is pretty steep and will slow you down your kill quite drastically. That's the basic strategy of the kill covered and now I'm going to show you how to kill it with melee which isn't too different.
So for Melee, the only setup I'm going to show is this Verax setup with a Nezi Helm and a Soul Wars Cape along with Dragon Boots and Barrow's Gloves. The aim of this setup is a mixture of prayer bonus and good defensive stats which comes from the Verax top and skirt along with the Nezi Helm. The reason for using a Verax Flail over something like a Whip and Dragon Defender is because I tested out the Whip but it seems to me that Glacers are a lot weaker to crush attacks so I was able to hit a lot more often with the Flail than with the Whip and Dragon Defender. I actually wouldn't recommend using melee with cheaper gear than this because it just wouldn't be worth it in my opinion and you'll just take too much damage and your prayer won't last very long. Things you could probably get away with substituting are probably the Fury which you could change for a Glory Amulet and if you don't have a Soul Wars Cape then you could use something like a Skill Cape or a Fire Cape or whatever you have but try and focus on Prayer Bonus for the Cape slot. And also if you have a Chaotic Maul then you should probably use that instead of the Flail because it'll obviously be a lot more effective. In the inventory my setup is very similar to the Mage setup except I'm bringing a bit more food this time and I've actually brought a Spec Weapon. I'd probably recommend taking the Enhanced Excalibur if you have it because you'll take a fair amount of damage throughout the fights. But if you want an offensive spec weapon then I'd take something like a Karasi or even a Granite Maul if you want. It could potentially be more effective than something like a DDS in this case. The main difference in the kill for melee is that instead of trying to stay far away from the Glacial you'll actually want to stay as close to it as you can throughout the fight as it's very likely to use melee if you're in melee range. So use Protect from Melee and Turmoil or Piety if you don't have Turmoil. Just be careful to make sure your HP is always high because although the Glacier will mainly attack with melee, it still will occasionally use range or mage. When the Glacites spawn you'll want to move away from the Glacier to take care of them. Make sure you attack the Enduring Glacier to lure it away from the Glacier. Make sure you keep an eye on the Glacier's attacks and remember to keep switching protection prayers. If you're going to use melee I'd recommend killing the sapping glacite last as it's the easiest to deal with when you go back to killing the glacier. Killing the unstable glacite last has the same issue as the low level mage setup I found in that it, I wasn't able to kill the glacier fast enough before it regenerated its health back. Anyway that's it for this guide, if it's helped you at all please give us a thumbs up because it really helps. If there's any particular boss monsters you want to know how to kill effectively on a budget then leave a comment below and I'll reply to it as soon as I can and I do take requests. Otherwise thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.